This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on foreign assistance to India in COVID-19 management. The participants are Shashank, former foreign secretary, and Manas Pratim Bhuyan, journalist. There has been generous outpouring of solidarity for India as India was hit by a devastating second wave of coronavirus. We saw around 40 countries, including US, Russia, Canada, France, as well as several other European countries. providing crucial medical supplies including oxygen cylinders concentrators and medicines to india and most of the countries said they came forward to assist india as india had helped them in their uh, difficult times so ambassador sasang how do you see the overall solidarity shown by the global community when india was reeling under a very difficult phase of coronavirus pandemic one important thing i find is that india has come out as a shining democracy trying to reach the population in different parts of india and to give them relief and help to deal with covid i mean we have our health policies where policy has to be decided by the center and the many of the health items have to be provided by the center but then the state governments who have to do the last mile work have to do the actual work with the people so therefore there was some kind of a, a delay in that and i think that initially we found that there was a disconnect both between the center and the state for some time and also between india and the many countries in the west now two things happened the one is india's democracy was so much appreciated by people in the west particularly that their people came forward their senators came forward their members of parliament came forward and they requested their government that they must help india in this matter so that was one people of indian origin and the indian communities living in different countries also they came up very strongly to support india so these are one thing second part was that a parallel investigation has started with president joe biden saying that he would like to see very quickly as to whether this is a laboratory based virus or it is something which has come from the animals so which means that china's role has once again become suspect in the eyes of the western leaders many leaders now russia and india are old friends so we are very happy to see that since india agreed to the sputnik v to be sold in india and also to be produced in india and i think russia is happy with that so therefore we find that russia which is a, who is a good friend of china they have also decided to come and help india above everything else i would say that suddenly the oxygen demand in india went up very high so we were not prepared for it for some time and i must say that the international community came forward even though some countries gave small amounts other countries gave larger amounts but they came forward and they did that and then the indian industry also rose splendidly to come up and produce the oxygen for the hospitals and for the this home home stay also so i would say that the international cooperation has been very good initially there was some kind of a delay there was some hesitation we saw that was because india south africa particularly had requested for vaccines to be out of the patent regime now this is an old battle which has been going on since the wto meetings in 2002 where india and south africa and what they were called the basic countries the china was there and the other countries were there they had all brazil was there they had all come together to say that issues like aids hiv plus there which have become national priorities and their national legislations their patent regimes should not uh, be used to protect the production of the vaccines and the generics should be able to go to any country which has issued the national legislation to create a national calamity now the many of the manufacturers so they agreed they had to agree fall in line with the government policies and the ngos in many advanced countries but then they came forward because now the trend was moving in that era from medicines to vaccines so this will not apply to vaccines so i think there is another uphill battle ahead of us to see that national priorities of public health are so important that if you go through vaccines i think they also need to be produced and india is one country which can produce a large number of vaccines all that we had done which was a slight mistake that our orders had been placed with the private companies and the companies which are working along with the government departments not to place a large order keeping in mind the requirements of the whole country and then also we wanted our vaccine battery diplomacy also to go ahead so therefore we were doing that not only for ourselves but also for other countries so there was some delay in that and i think there is again a disconnect in that that the companies are saying that okay we'll supply you maybe by august maybe by december so that issue has to be resolved still and i hope that our prime minister would be able to put his force behind all this so that a large number of companies can take up this job of doing covaxin sputnik v and 
Covishield. And whatever else comes up, we should import. We have seen the European Union coming out with very crucial statement and they also activated their civil protection mechanism under which a number of European countries supplied medical equipment and medicines to India. So how do you see European Union quickly activating the civil protection mechanism that plays a very central role in coordinating its responses to emergencies in Europe and beyond? So how do you see the solidarity shown by European Union to help India in an effective way? You know, one thing very special about European Union is that Union is very large, comprising 26 countries. But at the same time, the countries, some of them are small, some are large. And many of them have old relationships with India. So internationally, when Indian COVID crisis was starting, there was a lot of criticism in the international media saying that India has mishandled it, Indian government did not do things of this properly. But I think as facts started coming out, the European countries were able to see that very clearly that India was trying to do its very best and this international media had taken it everything wrong. And so they have now said that we must help India in achieving its targets. I think that's very important and I'm quite sure that what European Union has decided will also uh, lead countries like USA, UK and Russia and Australia and others. You know, so we have these friends in our quad and all that and we had decided in quad meeting that we would try to work together for the COVID response on an urgent basis. So I think now gradually uh, the two priorities and two initiatives are coming together that people are realizing that well, there is a promise that this quad is not only meant to protect Taiwan from China, but it is also meant to protect the countries of the world from these pandemics like COVID, which sometimes they start from China. Therefore, I think these things are now started moving in a more organized fashion. And I think the European Union has played an important part in that. So we have to appreciate that. So I would also like to have your perspective about assistance provided by uh, key countries like the U.S., Russia, France, Germany, and Japan. All these countries, in fact, have pitched in and they supplied large amount of medical supplies to India, particularly the U.S. sent six planes carrying huge amount of medical supplies. France sent first installment around 28 tons of medical supplies. So how do you see all these large countries, big countries, with whom we have very strong strategic partnership, helping India in a big way? Well, initially, I must say that we were all disappointed with the lack of response from the leadership in many of these big countries, especially the United States. And people in India at that time were saying that now Trump has gone, so the new leadership has come, and maybe they will not be as friendly to us. Maybe there are many Pakistani supporters in the administration, whatever it be it. I think gradually, the, as I said, that the Indian community living in these countries, secondly, their own parliamentarians, senators, congressmen, they started taking up this issue very strongly. And then the government realized that they have made a commitment in the Quad Summit meeting that COVID would be the first issue to be taken up by the Quad leaders. America, after Trump's departure, when he had only America first policy, and they started building once again their ties with Japan, Korea, and then the other Asian countries, and came up with this idea of Quad uh, more forcefully. So they felt that apart from the security and maritime issues, the first important issue which is hurting all the Asian countries is the COVID. And therefore, this must be number one issue. So then they realized that this will be a touchstone of our sincerity to fulfill the objectives that we have laid before us. And I think that was from the American side. Of course, I must say that French have been like a golden standard for India. They have come forward very strongly in India's favor, always, whenever we needed them. And they said that, look, we must help India because that is the hope for democracy in Asia. And therefore, they have come forward very strongly. So I think President Macron is really a good friend of Prime Minister Modi. And he has shown that, yes, he really came forward strongly. In Germany, there are likely to be elections, and we feel that perhaps there will be changes, and there might be some delay in their response. But Germany also, because of the various political parties all standing in favor of what India was trying to do, so they have come forward very strongly. And one thing is there in Europe, they are facing a similar issue, which India is also facing, though it is not coming out well in front. That is, the terrorism, use of refugees for terroristic purposes is something which is affecting the policy planners in Europe. It's also very much in the mind of the policy planners in Asian countries. 
And therefore, I'm quite sure that this was also behind the decision making in these countries that they realized that India needs to be supported fully. Russia, of course, President Putin has come forward very strongly to support. And I think he is facing his own issues with the European countries and with the Western countries. Even the Sputnik V, these countries are saying that it has not been properly tested. So in India, we have tested that. And so ready laboratory is ready to manufacture it. And before that, they will import it and it will be sold. So therefore, I think Russia also has come forward. And I would say Japan again. Japan is trying to be very, very close to India. And they, despite the fact that they have their lot of restrictions on their foreign policy and defense policy, but still they find that, you know, under the Quad umbrella, they can really come forward and help India very effectively. So I think it is not only what they have done immediately, but I think the manufacturing base in India can be further strengthened to deal with pandemics like COVID and the future production of medical facilities, medicines and other equipment. So now the focus has been on ramping up our domestic vaccine production and to ramp up our domestic vaccine production, we are looking at support from countries like U.S., as we need more raw materials for production of vaccines. So our foreign minister, as Jaishankar, is currently in the U.S. and he is discussing these issues with his counterpart, S. Blinken, as well as other top-ranking Biden administration officials. So are you hopeful of U.S. supplying additional quantities of raw materials so that institutions like SII, Serum Institute, and other manufacturers can boost our production of vaccines in India? So I'm very hopeful of the mission that Dr. Jayashankar has taken on behalf of India to the United States. But I must alert our people that USA, all said and done, is the land of free enterprise. And it is not necessary that the government gives orders and the private sector would immediately comply with those orders. It may not happen like this. So the raw materials and many of the intermediate things which are required for the production of Covishield or whatever, Covaxin, etc. I don't know what all is required from the USA, but there the private sector comes into the picture. So we'll have to do both things. That is request the government for its help. At the same time, also talk to the private sector operatives to see what all they can do directly with the Indian corporate sector. And at the same time, we have to make sure whether there are any possibility of getting some of the raw materials from other sources, including Indian sources, if we can develop them in India. And above all, the two vaccines, which I find that Sputnik V perhaps will have no dependence on the American or other Chinese raw materials. So we can perhaps ramp up their production very strongly. And secondly, Covaxin, which is an ICMR and thing with the with Yella groups, I think they can perhaps be given production orders to several companies in India so that we can achieve our targets very fast. I think if this could have been done earlier, thinking that we have a large population, 150 crores, so I think then you need about 300 crores vaccine and at least 50-60% that is people who are in the senior age group who have comorbidities, they can be taken care of first. So then we can start moving towards herd immunity as you are finding in small countries like Israel, in Malta, where 60-70% people have already got the doses of vaccine. And so they are now advising their people that they can now move around freely, sometimes even without the mask. So I think that we have to, of course, follow all the protocol for COVID because still we are in this range of 30%. But that should be our first priority to somehow ramp up the production within the country. And in the meantime, that we can have some delays on the raw materials from other countries, try to see as to which vaccine we can ramp up the production within India or import from outside, but at reasonable prices. Because, you know, some vaccines like are good, Pfizer and Moderna, but their supply chain is supposed to be very complicated because they have to be carried at very high cool temperatures. So therefore, they need to be at minus 30, minus 40 degree centigrade. And while we can bring them into the country, but to take them to the villages or to small places would be difficult. So they perhaps will have to be brought in and then given to the private sector that all right, those who are willing to pay, maybe in the larger towns, let them pay for it and we should not stop them from getting it. But the point remains that what the government will do for the general public, that should be the first priority for the government. Thank you, Ambassador Sashank, for your in-depth insights into the issue of the international uh, solidarity towards India's fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you very much. You were listening to a discussion on foreign assistance to India in COVID-19 management. The participants were Shashank, former Foreign Secretary, and Manas Pratimbhuyan, journalist. 
This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our website newsonair.com.